This conference will now be recorded. Okay, yep. All right, we're going to call the High School Testing Committee meeting to order at 3.36. Um, can I get the roll call, please? Uh, Mayor Igor? Here. Kyle Jago? Here. Yes, sir. Here. Jessica Atkinson? Here. Annette Alvin here? Here. Tracy Kluke? Here. And Linda Ma? Here. Great. Okay, please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. All right, um, action on the agenda. I welcome a motion for the moving the agenda. A motion to approve. Motion by Kyle. I'll second. Second, Jessica. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Action on the minutes from March 13th, 2023. <laughs> I'm new. Tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Annette, can you say it out loud? Sorry. Oh, here, miss the uh, under. I think we're some engineering. Yeah. And then um, I think Rex is a PR, our episode, the PFR, because of their um, forestry and record. Oh, yeah. I decided yeah. to change our department name. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we keep, so we keep the PFR instead of the PR. Thanks, Rex. <laughs> and then under the same one, that's under 88. Under the same one, it looks like it's high 141 to high 41. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, easy. That's all I found. I have one small item. So under reports, uh, under public works, yeah. this is the Cormier stencils that were replaced prior to the first back of the yeah. season game. Um, for that, uh, we'll just we'll, we'll essentially just review all the pavement marking um, pretty soon here. Uh, don't know if it will be before the first. Back in preseason game, but this fall, correct. You could say that. Why this fall? Okay. Are you the school starting? We don't know that. I guess we don't. Because yeah, what, so what we do fall. is we look at all pavement marking as a whole, yep. and then replace whatever is in the forest condition. So it may be that these stencils may be holding up better than something else that may be failing. So I don't even know if I could. Say confidently that's this year. Yeah, we'd like for it to be this year. Yeah. Correct. And it's it's core mirror. It says. Yep, we got yeah. that one. Gotcha. Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, the only one I have is on nine. The next bike and head meeting is scheduled for April ten. So there should just be a space between each and ten. Any other comments, corrections on the minutes? <clears throat> Otherwise, I welcome a motion to approve. Approve. Motion, motion by, motion by Leroy. I second. Second by Linda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, six is comments from the public. Let's see anybody online, and there is nobody in here, so we're going to continue on. Um, number seven, A, is for reports and updates. Um, help catch on public safety. Commander Ryan. Ryan is here. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hey, so, um, no huge updates from our last meeting. Uh, we did have a um, traffic uh, committee meeting uh, with public safety staff and uh, public works staff uh, on the. I uh, just kind of followed up, got some updates on some of the current projects. Or the Element Way, Bridge, uh, um, Bridge and Valley View, um, red light timing that was adjusted back in October. Uh, waiting to see a little bit the um, run numbers here by the next few months, see if we notice any change with the uh, lengthening of some of the uh, red light timing. Is that on um, what road is that on? I just uh, Oneida and Hanson, Oneida and Pilgrim, Holmgren and Hanson uh, were modified by Capco in October 22. 
uh, to lengthen the uh, what's that going to turn that where you've got red face in all directions? The, um, it's just all the red. Area. Intersection clearing time. Yeah, intersection clearing time. Uh, so we'll get a little time yet to see if we got positive uh, effects from that, if we can quantify that. Um, as far as uh, some things that we discussed uh, or potential issues, um, we did look at uh, and discuss the stop sign configurations along Morris. Specifically Morris and Marley, Morris and uh, Ori. Uh, Ms. Ovinger mentioned that uh, that was worth a look. Uh, we did talk about that, kind of argue on that one as yes, it doesn't interrupt the traffic flow on Morris Ave. Uh, but we discussed it. Uh, we felt pretty comfortable that that was actually going to be a net positive effect uh, to help calm the speed of traffic along Morris, being that's a um, 25 zone through there. Uh, so we are comfortable staying with how it is signed, even with the uh, uh, interruption of the flow, because Again, it's probably going to be a, a net benefit. Um, so we'll probably leave that one as is, but we had a pretty good uh, discussion on it. Uh, another one we looked at was uh, we did take a look at uh, signal and lane configuration on uh, Bridge Road and uh, Cormier Road. Um, Brian had brought that one up as far as being uh, right for a look. Uh, so we did look at traffic crash data for that intersection. Um, and of the traffic crash that we had there, uh, there were driver behavior issues versus engineering related issues. So at this time, we don't have a recommendation for any changes to the layout or the lights at Ridging, I'm sorry, uh, Ridging Cormier. Um, that's just based off of looking at what the traffic crash data showed us for that intersection. Um, How many crashes were there, Brian? Do you have any idea? Was it quite a few, or is it not? There were, was it like eight, I think, there was over five years? Oh. But they were all um, issues. Of, was it a lot of them? people left-hand turns? Uh, yeah, failure to yield on a left-hand turn was a frequent one, and then uh, unsafe lane changes was another one. Um, so yeah, driver driver conduct issue. Yeah. yeah. And that was yeah that was over the span of uh, ten years. Just looking at that. Uh, then we also discussed uh, speeding issues on uh, Berkwood Drive. Uh, we've been working on getting our uh, offices out there a little bit more to pay some attention to it. And this came from the uh, contracted work on Berkeley Drive. Um, so uh, there's been some uh, mitigating steps that uh, the contractor has been allowed to take. Um, for example, uh, put on temporary uh, what, temporary speed, speed bumps. Temporary speed bumps there. Um, I guess at one point they, uh, on their own volition, decided to shut down the road. Uh, <laughs> I got addressed. <laughs> so we'll monitor for that, but uh, yeah, you guys turn the balance as far as uh, wanting them to put up the uh, temporary speed bumps. And I asked them about permanent ones, and that would, that would be a good idea. So I got, I got educated on that one. Um, it made sense. Other than that, uh, we're still for, uh, going along with our hiring process. Um, so that's going to be about another month uh, project or so. Um, we got to fill some of those spots before we continue forward with that uh, traffic officer position. So of the bodies we're authorized for this year, we're authorized one to add in uh, February, and then the uh, remaining two for this year we have uh, were authorized in uh, June. So it'll plug out nicely with the hiring process, uh, but we're just not quite there yet. Looking good, I'm optimistic. And Brian, you were the contact for the Frogger, and you guys are all familiar with the Frogger, it's basically the pedestrian yeah. crosswalk. Um, procedure that they do. Um, so is that Schwab going to be able to participate this year or is it still? No, that we'll participate in. Okay. Uh, we made the decision uh, within the department that that is uh, certainly worth participating in. Uh, it's not a reimbursed one. Yep. Um, so that, that does come out of our pocket, but it is worthwhile. It's been a good event. Um, and it, it's a one day event. Well, I'm sorry, two day event. Usually they do a uh, summer one and they do a fall one. Um, I don't have the dates yet. I do reach out to Mario and let him know that I do. In contact with that, so plan is to do it like we did last year. Um, and actually, the past couple of years, we'll have a, um, a dedicated officer for that one, and then uh, probably a CSO as a dedicated front. All right, thank you, Brian. Any other questions, for Brian? Anything else? Um, if you guys have anything that, like traffic wise, engineering wise, or uh, you know, uh, traffic sign wise, please uh, forward them to me and we'll discuss it at our. Traffic committee meetings on staff, and um, yeah, I'll take a look at it and give it consideration. Good, thank you. All right, um, 
B is Public Works and Engineering, and Brian is here. Um, he also has a report in their packet. So, Brian, do you have anything to add? Definitely. So, um, the one thing that I also I forgot to include uh, in my report um, it was a technical warning field on the southwest corner of Main Ave and Backerland that was tipped up. Um, so, that's we removed the portion that was bent upward and obviously got hooked by the plow. Um, so, that's been resolved. Um, other than that, uh, real quick, uh, construction on Morris was going very well. Um, the crews that are installing the utilities uh, are doing very, very well and being very efficient. Element Way uh, did also kick off uh, on the 3rd of April. Um, that's going to about how you'd expect utilities to go, so nothing good, nothing bad, just uh, carrying along. Um, the Village Hall North parking lot and sidewalk project, uh, that includes a sidewalk installation on Brett Farb and Bart Pass. Rep Farm and Bart Star. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the contract was awarded on the 28th. Um, with that, we're going to start having a pre construction meeting with Northeast Asphalt. Um, and then it also includes pedestrian accommodations at the intersection of Cormier and San Luis. Um, other than that, really no updates on snow removal on sidewalks and trails. Uh, just because snow has been kind of limited and there hasn't been anything unique. So. I was going to add to Brian's report. I did speak with Cole Rungi last week. Uh, if you recall, we're working with Brown County Planning to conduct a corridor study on Holmgren Way from Cormier up to Lombardi. They have done the, Cole has coordinated and collected all the preliminary data, so the crash analysis, speed data, ADT, future, future ADT, so 2050 traffic counts. He has all that data compiled um, and he is planning on coming to this group. In June, I did invite him to the main meeting, but he's going to be on a family vacation that week, so he's out. But he is he does it have, does have it on the schedule to come to the committee in June for the June meeting to discuss the analytics and the data behind the traffic counts, and then start talking about preliminary concepts, if you will, as to what would be reasonable or possible based on those traffic counts and kind of a sequence of that. So it sounds like he's done quite a bit of legwork. Uh, Aaron Schutte and I will be meeting with him in advance of that meeting just to kind of review that information so that um, we can put put together some basic information in the packet for the meeting. Sounds good, thank you. Um, Brian, can I ask one question quick? Um, the and San Luis intersection, what are the pedestrian accommodations that you're going to fix or take care of there? What do you actually Yeah, need? so um, they're actually in the areas where the push buttons are close enough to the intersection, they're going to be putting a paved surface up to those push buttons. Um, then there are some push buttons that are actually pretty far away from the intersection. <laughs> those are getting moved up towards the intersection. Okay. So okay. it's mainly just push button work more than anything. Um, and with that, you know, there's obviously some paving and electrical and bases and stuff that are going in. But it's some more uh, we can get bigger to push buttons. Okay. That'll be great, especially mm -hmm. with the library going there and the senior facility going there. That'll be a busier intersection probably with people walking through there than it has been in the past. So that'll be good. Because some of those buttons, you literally have to push in the front almost over there to get across because it's so far away from the intersection. I believe that intersection was included in your list of projects, right? I think I it went out and kind of did some walkthroughs and stuff. And yep. That was an idea. That was identified as a high priority, yeah. so that was the first one that was bumped up. Yeah. For that, and then, and then the couple of yeah. yeah. And then the one over here, yeah. Morris, right? Morris, Which yeah. will get re reconfigured with, with, yes. with the work that we have going on. So, so two yeah, of two of them, right? Yeah. That's good. That's good. That is good. All right. Any any other questions of Ryan? Ryan, anything else? Oh, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Park Rack, Rex, anything on your end? Yeah, thanks. Just a little bit on the Ashwaub neighbor trail update. Progress is coming along as expected. They're pouring concrete where they were as of about an hour or two ago um, uh, on some of the landings on, on the Ashwaub Bay Park side. Um, and I know that they have poured some concrete already on the pilings that have been out in the river. So it's coming yeah. along. Made the deadline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was March 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they had to bring in another crane from Milwaukee to do it, but yeah, they did it soon. Well, um, one of the things, sorry, 
one of the things that the, the village is working on, just a little bit of an update uh, on the West Main Avenue Trail, is it's a section from Ridge Road to Highway 41. So we'll talk with the command. We've kind of got a rough timeline put together to put together a proposal for the village board. Um, I'm going to say they're going to submit their proposal at the end of April, and I will hit public works and protection probably on May 2nd. Village board on May 23rd. Um, and what that is is to to have McMahon do some preliminary work on, on uh, we're going to do a sidewalk in that area. What room do we have? Do we have enough room? If utilities need to be moved for the sidewalk, where do the utilities have to go? Do we still have enough right of way to use them to put the utilities in? Or do we need to acquire or assign some kind of easement to, to get more space to, to relocate those utilities? We know there will be some of that. We're hoping to try and minimize that. But the good thing is some of this work has already been done as part of the process of uh, a, a past project. So they won't have to reinvent the wheel when they're doing this, um, but they should be having that to us in about two weeks or so. That's in front of the line, the, the capital credit union coming up on the hill from the live skates. So good. Um, that's still looking, looking to be done. Now we don't have, we're not going to be doing work. Again, this is just trying to figure out what do we need? And if we need to get easements, you know, can we get easements? And then maybe start on that process so that eventually, this project will be shovel ready whenever the village has funds available to actually move forward on it. Good. Thank you. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> Anything else, Rex, or any other questions, everybody? Anybody for Rex? Okay. Thank you. Wello, Kelly, did Wello get you any? No, no update from Wello. I know they're working on the as I mentioned with, um, with Brian. Um, and the village will get involved in that. Um, one thing that we work on while it was. Okay, so we're on to item 88A is update on Court of Appeals decision on Sojin Homer, main I mean, we butchering that LLC versus Village of Egg Harbor. Yeah, I wanted to make the committee aware of this um, recent Court of Appeals decision. This is kind of an interesting one that I think one in which we'll want to stay tuned to because it will have. Could have profound impact not only for the village and some projects that we have going forward, but certainly with the county, and specifically the county because of their response to the Court of Appeals decision. So, to break it down um, as best as I can and as easily as I can, a few years back, within a state budget bill, a legislator slipped in some legislation that prohibited local municipalities from using eminent domain to take right of way for what was defined as a pedestrian way or trail. And I think the idea, the legislative intent behind it was there was a municipality in southeastern Wisconsin that acquired some property through eminent domain to put like a greenway, a trail through. Okay. And these individuals that were impacted by the taking um, were connected to state legislators who then slipped this provision within the bill. Uh, it was largely interpreted when that had, when that statutory amendment passed that this did not impact sidewalks and didn't impact other appurtenances to roadway projects. Uh, that it was just strictly trails, and so as long as you didn't put a trail in, you were going to be okay. Um, as you saw, probably if you read through the brief uh, from the Court of Appeals, the Village of Ann Carver, along with the county, we're planning, and state for that matter, we're planning on road improvements uh, up in Ed Harbor that would have included sidewalks as part of the project. Based on my understanding of it, there was a gap between sections of sidewalk, between new and older sections of road, the village and the county and state desired to make these connections. They went ahead and did that, and the soldier, Sojin Hammer, um, is the owners of the shipwreck, shipwreck, uh, Bar and Grill Brewery, okay. Nightheart, Red Brewery. Um, that's the business that was impacted by the taking. They sued uh, the court, uh, circuit court, ruled in favor of the village of Nightheart, saying yes, in fact, they have the authority within statutes to condemn property and take it through eminent domain. Uh, Sojin Hammer obviously appealed, went through the Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals dissented on that. Uh, it's largely anticipated that this matter will go to the state Supreme Court. The League of Wisconsin Municipalities is 
putting together some thoughts on this issue, and I'm sure there will be municipalities um, that will be providing some type of amicus and brief indicating support for the circuit court's opinion on the matter, uh, and then hopefully a carver will petition this to the Supreme Court. Now, interestingly, this, the Court of Appeals, they ruled in favor of Soljenhauer, but they didn't identify any type of penalty or recourse. So what happens? The project's been done for a couple years. The right-of-way has been taken. The sidewalk has been installed, but what? Do they get more compensation? Do they have to relinquish the right-of-way? Does the sidewalk get removed? No one, no one truly knows that. The courts didn't make that decision. So that, that's interesting in its of itself. So that's the, the basis, basics of it. Now, when that court opinion came out, within just about hours, we get notification from Brown County that they are now shifting their policy as it relates to roadway design in, for county trunk highways in Brown County, thus removing basically any form of sidewalks or pedestrian or bicycle facilities from a road project. Um, and so that's now their typical section is it's all gone. And if a municipality desires to do that, effectively what we would have to do is more or less create what is a, what's called a transportation plan. So anytime a road gets reconstructed in which right away has to be taken or acquired to support that project, a transportation plan is drafted very similarly to a subdivision plan. Okay, surveyor drafts it finds the uh, ways and means, and then they, they put together these coordinates, and it gets approved by the various governing bodies, gets recorded, and then from that plat, it identifies the areas of take or acquisition that's necessary. So it's a very detailed and technical document. If a municipality desires to have additional right-of-way taking to support pedestrian ways, bicycle facilities, a second transportation plat would have to be drafted to do that, and I think the intent there is, and without speaking directly with the highway commissioner, is they do not want these secondary amenities, if you will, the sidewalks, the bike lanes, so on and so forth, to inhibit their ability to close and finish their project, right? So they want to be able to go out, get the right of way they need for the road. If you want these pedestrian ways and bicycle facilities, you do that on your own. We're going to acquire what we need and then we're gonna get our project done and have no hiccups, no legal issues or quandaries, all that other stuff you deal with. Um, so that makes it really unique. Um, I think there definitely needs to be some conversation at the municipal levels, because then what happens? Who's right away? Is it, is it the counties? Is it the locals? What happens if there's a hiccup with condemnation? There's a whole litany of issues or concerns with it that will have a profound impact. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. There's a lot more details to it. Where this impacts us, look at projects like Vanderparen. Uh, we went and reconstructed Vanderparen. We did not include sidewalk in a section of that, primarily because of the constraints of right. right? And we knew that we had um, uh, an individual property owner that was probably a little bit more objectable to it. So what happens now? Do we, can we take the right away? Can we not? Um, what's the, the impacts there? You look at Packerland County Trunk Highway. A number of years ago, the, the village and the county agreed that they weren't going to reconstruct it into a four-lane highway like the northern section, primarily because the traffic counts at the time didn't necessarily justify the full reconstruction. If you were to reconstruct that and urbanize that, what happens then? Obviously, that, that will have impacts. Um, and then if you look at, I think it, it's Grant Street, the one with the roundabout is going in. Uh, what will happen to that section if it gets urbanized? I know there's been a desire to put some type of facility or some set of facilities there as well. Um, so this kind of has to get worked out. I'm of the opinion that um, you, would, you wouldn't change your typical section, build the road to the design that you desire. So if that includes bike lanes and sidewalks, you do that. Um, you go out and you go through the normal appraisal process. You acquire the right of way as you would voluntarily. If it gets to a point where you actually have to invoke eminent domain and go through the condemnation process, then if, if the legal standing sits where you cannot use that for sidewalks or bike lanes, then you pull those out. Because that, that, that's it. You don't have the legal authority to do that. But most projects generally will have a 
agree of all parties to the to the acquisition because you will negotiate a price and you'll pay, pay a fair market price, oftentimes significantly higher than fair market price because going through condemnation is not a very very fun process. It's pretty difficult. Um, so you try to avoid it at all costs and you usually pay over what the fair market value is. Um, so that, that's really it in a nutshell. I guess we wanted to make sure the committee was aware of it because it is definitely a fast moving change. It does have an, a, a direct and significant impact in the village. Maybe not necessarily right now immediately, but it will in the short term and the long term. Uh, I do have some other questions about this whole thing. So let's say you acquire right away and 20 years from now when the road has to get refurbished or rehab and you didn't have sidewalks included in it when you were Acquired the right of way through them, and then you decide 20 years from now that you want to put sidewalks in. What happens then? So there's a lot of what ifs that are kind of yeah. questionable at this point. So when you talked about the county, so are there cases where you have to do this flat with the county when it's county and us, or do you have to do that every time, even though they're not, it's not part of their roadway? Yeah, if it was a local only roadway, it would be just the village. Just that the would village. Do that. If it's a county trunk highway, generally speaking, it's the county's uh, plat of right or transportation yep. plat. Uh, so they produce the plat, and then the right of way oh, is actually dedicated your... to the county and not to the village. So Ridge Road, where these people have their houses for the Packer games, that could be a real issue because they don't want you to take their property to put a sidewalk in. If I right. remember correctly, we went through that for some of the. The house is on the, I think they're on the east side. They are on the east side. I, I believe in that particular case, just to be specific about it, the sidewalks would have fit in, would have fit within the existing right of way. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, if had okay, to so you would have had to acquire. Yeah. Okay, now I'm glad it's, you. It gets really muddy too. So, like, let's use that as an example. The sidewalks could fit within the right of way, but then oftentimes we want to acquire a temporary construction easement to match the grades in. And so we might extend our work into private property. Yeah. Sometimes you get compensation, sometimes you don't need to, because it just makes sense to match it in. Yeah. But if you have homeowners or property owners that are pretty objective, uh, object to it, mm -hmm. they don't, they won't agree to it. And then all of a sudden you just have these goofy grades that um, a yard that comes in and then it drops like four inches over the course of uh, six sure. inches. It's like a wall. Is the egg arbor thing? If you dig into it, I'd agree with as much as I could. I learned the word uh, surplus age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know what the that one. Yeah. But um, when that all started, it, all, it was almost like a money thing. They yeah. wanted three times the value of what they were offering. So then I, because it looks like it's been going on since 2015. Yes. This is a long yeah. drawn yeah. out. So there's some attorneys making yeah. some money here. Yes. Yeah, and it's interesting too in that particular case. If, if you had known, if the designers had known at the time that this would have been a problem, they probably could have fit the infrastructure within the existing right of way. And it would have changed the design of the road, and it certainly maybe wouldn't have been the most uh, appropriate design, but it, it could have fit, right? So maybe they squeeze the sidewalk in, but they were trying to fit in a terrace area, some street lighting, decorative features, the sidewalk was going to be offset. Some of that could have fit within the design if they had known that there was going to be a problem. Yeah. I think First you just had, um, had your last statement about there's so much right away a road has. And I think everyone's looking at this as the bicycle and pedestrian facilities are the last things. They're out on the edge, so they're the one that are going to go. And that's how the highway commissioner is looking at it. But the highway commissioner is responsible for moving all traffic, all traffic, mm -hmm. which is, includes pedestrians, bicyclists, even includes horses and horse -drawn carriages. That's part of the state statute for that. So I think we need, municipality and we need to have a shift that there is a right of way there and he's saying, well, we can't go outside of that. This is what we have. There's no sidewalks, there's no this. Then you have a right of way. We want that to be accommodated in that right away. We need to start looking at roads. Do we need four lane roads? Can we do something different? Can we maybe, you know, do something with different with the vehicular traffic so that we can include our pedestrian and bicyclists? So I think it's something that we need to really get a shift in yeah. and start looking at that. Because can you guys imagine Oneida Street without sidewalks? 
you imagine that? How would you move through that area? You want to walk across the street to go to, you know, Burger King or whatever? You can't even cross because there's no sidewalks. I mean, that's what we're talking about. There are county roads that go right through municipalities, like their main corridors, like Lineville, for instance. They're not going to put any sidewalks or anything there for people to walk or move. You know, a third of our population doesn't have a car, doesn't drive a car. So a third of our population we're not taking care of. We're not allowing them to safely move through the community. So this is a big deal. It really is. And is I'm a, hoping the municipality. How do you overcome? So I don't want to get political. Yeah, I know. But I mean, you, you made the statement. And there's yeah. two ways you get things done. You have a lobbyist and a good one. Right. Or you have money. And money is public. Right. Anybody has money, their next step is public. Right. I don't care who it is. Right. If they have a lot of money, they want to use that power yeah. in most cases. But you as a little individual, you really don't have a voice. We have to create our voice through right. municipalities. Right. Right. And a lot of these, but we don't we don't really have a voice. Yeah. Well and you can if you work with some there's advocate groups in the area, you know, there's bike club clubs, there's well, the club over there. Yeah. There's a lot of groups that will help push for this or help, you know, get the information out. Or wrap on the doors of your Exactly. I mean I think it's something yeah. that Joel said and Ryan is. had mentioned it too, that you know, this has a profound impact. On Northeast Wisconsin, it truly does, and it's one person. That, How do we get know, the rest of the municipalities? I think you, have, you know the administration. I'm sure are talking about it. I'm sure the public works guys are kind of talking about it. It's all very new, but there are people out there. I'm sure talking about it. I know some of the advocacy groups are already talking about it. People are very aware of it. So there is the words out there, but I think we'll just try to keep in, in touch with what's going on and see how we can help as well. Well, well I, and I, you talk about the municipalities, you're talking about the advocacy groups, you're talking about it. And, and those groups understand that, but the average public doesn't won't right. understand it until it affects them. And mm -hmm. they're going to say, well, why don't we have a sidewalk here? Mm -hmm. And we, then you explain it, that, you know, then they're going to get involved, but that's. That's a long thread. It is. Stretch. It's an education thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's huge education. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm with you. You don't want to give up. I'm not, no. I'm not, no, I'm not, not saying. Not. You know. No. One of the things that you know I forgot to mention too is a couple of projects, not necessarily specific to Ashwaubenon, but in our area that you will see this impact is obviously the Southern Bridge. Yes. So we have federal and, and state dollars and local dollars going to support that. Yeah. Uh, Lineville Road, Tracy mentioned right. that's another one that's being funded through federal Ackerland, state money. Mason. Yep. Mason. Yep, Mason. Yeah, so, interestingly, especially the federal dollars, oftentimes yes. urban STP require right. pedestrian accommodation yeah. as part of the grant. Yeah. So, even the DOT is kind of in, yeah. in a tough position. Like, well, what do we do? Right. We have a requirement that these have to go in, but then we don't have the tools to utilize in order to, to actually construct it. Now, you could argue that again, you could, you know, alter your design to make sure that it, it fits within the right way that you have, but that's not always the safest or most accommodating methodology for it. And there are, oftentimes, my experience has been when you're using condemnation, is because you've exhausted just about all efforts to design it, and you're at the point where you've constrained yourself too much, where it becomes a safety or an environmental issue, and now you need it. Right. Or simply the project just doesn't happen. Right. It gets delayed for forever, and, uh, and Brian is familiar with this State Highway 15, although not a pedestrian issue, but it was large part an issue of right-of-way taking. The Highway 15 bypass that's being constructed around Hortonville right now, that particular project took over 20 years to actually come to fruition because you had a landowner that objected to the sale, who was good friends with the state legislator, and so the project kept getting put into the state budget and then yanked because they didn't want to upset the individual that they were friends with. And so literally people, literally people died. Literally people died on that highway before they finally took it. Which is a shame, you know? Yeah. yeah. The thing is, when you build roads and you don't have a combination, people are still going to be walking and biking out there. They have to, they have to get to where they're going. Everyone does not drive a car. You, every one of us are pedestrians at some time in our life. Mm -hmm. And when we don't have accommodations for them, it becomes more dangerous for them, but it also becomes more dangerous for the more vehicle driver. 
who wants to hit somebody and kill them? That mental, you know, that how does that affect you? So it's not just the vice for the pedestrians, it's the motorists that are out there as well that it affects them. So. That's why I believe this thing is all about money. Oh, because they say yeah. right in your road, people had to walk on the street to get yeah. past the place. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you ever go there, that yes. whole corner in it's itself a is a nightmare it is. driving and more walk, and then you have everyone's going there for whatever it is. I mean, yeah, that right. area is in general a hot mess all the time. I think the sidewalk right. wasn't on Highway 57 or 54, it was, it was outside, on the the, the, side the, whatever that Highway B, I think, was yeah. Up yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, now they added, like, there's other places back behind it, so it's right. Yeah, it totally makes sense what they added there. Oh, yeah. the it's nice it's, it's, it's a lot nicer very than nice. it was, but yeah. safer. They probably have no idea what they're really getting into if they just wanted a little more money to ripple effect. Yeah. 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 Well, exactly. How yeah. it will impact the whole state. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 All right. Any other words of wisdom? So, Ryan, anything to add or anybody have any other questions on this? Otherwise, please keep us updated. And if we can help in any way, um, as a community, let us know. We can yeah, it was, on it it was good info. Letter or really whatever nice. the case may be. All right, I'm just going to backtrack real quick to Wello, if you guys don't mind. Um, Terry bought me the information from Wello. Um, for the upcoming Yield to Your Neighbor activity, the Frogger, Mario will be presenting to all the Chiefs meetings tomorrow. So there must be a Chiefs meeting tomorrow. Um, and then she just said, we hope Ashwab and I can participate again this year. And Brian said they were planning on it. So that's the update from Wello. Um, okay, 8B is discussion of possible recommendation on updating the comprehensive bicycle and pedestrian plan. Is that, um, that yours, Rex? It was. Okay. It is. There you go. So, it, the last couple of years, it seems like it's been somewhat painful to add some of the updates to our, our current point and head plan. So we've got it. We've got them in there, and but maybe get some feedback here. I think the plan is starting to become somewhat disjointed, as well as a lot of the information, other than the very specific Eshkwabanon based projects. A lot of it's just general bike and ped rules, um, right of way information, more more DOT type information in that plan. Some of that is not outdated because it's it's what, 14, 14 years old at least from when it was when the original plan was approved by the village board. All of the updates that we've done to this point are specifically for projects within the village, not not some of the general information on bike and pedestrian accommodations, what what should be used in different areas, how how to make some determinations that type of thing. So, with that, because we're, we're moving forward, obviously, with this, with this application, you know, or at least discussing that application, or kind of referencing the biking pet plan quite a bit, it probably should be discussed as, as a time to update our general bike and pet plan as a whole. Literally, I don't want to say blow it up, but take the information we have and, and just reconfigure everything, update the rules, the the accommodation information that the state has, you know, changed in the last 15 years. Um, I think it might be a good idea to do that. I don't think anyone was really excited about doing that themselves, sitting at this table. You know, like even if we all took a different piece, I still don't think we'd be really excited about doing that. <laughs> so uh, then that then we look at our okay, well, if, if they don't want to do that, what what do other communities do? In other community, a lot of community, we've done a lot of stuff on our own. I don't want to say try and save money, but that's what we've done. And, it, it, and that's all we've needed to do to get stuff into the plan. But I think it's time to kind of redo our plan. Um, and like I said, not blow everything up, but just reconfigure a few things and, and update some of the laws and rules and whatnot that's there. Um, at the same time, the village is looking at updating their general comprehensive plan. So the thought is to kind of work hand in hand with that update on the village's comprehensive plan and update the bike and pet plan at the same time. Whether it's the same firm, whether it's a different firm, but at the very least the plans would be updated at the same time and whoever is doing what can work in concert with each other to make sure that they're, they're matching 
would, would, would put as both plans are being updated. So that's that's the idea or the thought for discussion. Um, well, the bike plan definitely uh, needs to be updated. I mean, like you said, it's, it's done in 2009, and it definitely needs a total revamp. We cannot do it as a committee. That's not our job. Not our job at all. We don't have the expertise and knowledge like that. So we should get some cost, well, for bid, whatever, proposals to do it. Um, I don't know what the timeline is for the comp plan versus the bike and pet plan. I kind of have mixed feelings on doing them together because I think the bike and pet plan is more specific and it's going to have more specifics to it than the comp plan. That's an overreaching, you know, the whole community and you can easily feed the bike pet plan into that or try not do it. So I don't sure. see doing them both at the same time, but that's just me. Um, so, but it definitely needs to get done. But I, I don't know, like I said, what your timeline is. You're thinking on the comp plan if that's next year, three years, or where you guys are at on that. And you're right. The comp plan's going to be very general. Right. But it's also going to give the direction for specifics that should go into the bike and pet plan. Somewhat. You know, like what, what, are, what are the goals for the village's comprehensive plan? Sure. And then those definitely need to be incorporated into the bike and pet plan. Breaking it down into much further specific recommendations type of a thing. I, I don't know, Joel, if you've got. Yeah, I was just, you know, I would just add, yeah, and you guys, I think, are saying this in just different different words, I guess. Just like creating a, the two plans so that there's consistency. I just don't want yeah. to create conflicts between the two. Right. So that the idea about doing them in concert with one another is just the idea of what that creates some synergy to create that consistency between. It, it seems it, it seemed to me for a long time, and part of this goes back to the previous discussion. Cycling and, and pedestrians have always been sort of an afterthought. We're just going to move all these cars, and if we can accommodate people walking or biking, cycling, we'll do that when it's convenient or when it's easy. If we do these together, I think the bike and pedes part of it sort of is elevated a little bit. I don't say it's it's equal, but it's it's given a little bit more importance. If you're doing a comprehensive plan and you're doing the bike and pet plan, I think the bike and pet plan part of it gets a little more either kind of validation. Or or something like that. So but but I, I, I think that sort of it, it elevates the status of biking and walking if if you're doing it in, in conjunction with the whole village thing rather than well we're gonna do what we can to the village, and oh yeah, you get the bike and pit over here, we'll do that when we can. But if we do them together, I think it just sort of elevates, it, it, you know, I don't say makes them equal, but makes them. There's a sense of consideration. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I think, you know, this, I'm just thinking of specific examples based on prior experience where some things kind of get lost a little bit. It's, the bike and pet plan is very detailed, kind of technical document. Yeah. Uh, the comp plan is that that visionary overarching document. However, there may be certain circumstances where the comp plan, I've seen it where they kind of delve into the weeds a little bit because oftentimes you might have two different groups looking at these documents differently. So as an example, the comp plan is really being driven by plan, planning commission, village board, again, big picture type stuff. The bike and ped plan is really going to be driven primarily by this committee, right? And then ultimately the village board is going to adopt it. Where you sometimes run into conflicts is you might have a plan commissioner that's not really well versed in bike and ped issues. So they say, you know what? I don't like sidewalks. I like trails everywhere. I would rather have a trail on every road than a sidewalk. Because to me, trails, you guys maintain them. Sidewalks, I maintain. I would rather have trails everywhere. This committee might say, boy, trails everywhere just doesn't work. It's a safety issue, there's an accessibility issue, and from a technical standpoint, the bike and pet committee would be right. So that's where that synergy and that connection can come into play. I have seen that with things where you have these people out left field in one area, and then these people in right field in another area, and there's no, let's bring it back together. Because if a road project comes up, they say, well, the comp plan says we're putting trails here, but the bike plan says we're putting sidewalks on both sides. Then there's a conflict, and then we get into a big debate, and then the project gets delayed. And it's 
So that's why the idea of the synergy kind of makes some sense. Of these experiences. Yeah. I've had some of those experiences. <laughs> I'm um, not saying it would happen. So who who actually does these plans? A lot of different companies that do it. Some specialize right. in bike and so if they're doing these on a consistent basis, wouldn't they be able to answer the question, would it be best to do these two plans at the same time? Yeah, That's what they do for a living. Yeah. And let them give us at least an opinion, whether they think that's smart or do you need that comp plan prior to you doing, right. because you have to live off of their plan. Hopefully we don't, but, yeah. but we do. In today's world, that's the way it works. Yeah. And I'm sure we're no different than any other municipality. Which makes sense. And I know Brown County does like plans also. They've done. I know they did that when I was in Alloy, they did alloys. Um, oh, and I don't really? Know if they do. Yeah, I don't oh. know if they do big comp plans. I'm not sure. They used to. I they think do. they still may do some, but okay. like smaller, like townships and such. Yeah, yeah. you're probably right. Yeah, small ones. Um, so yeah, so they they do that type of work too. But and I mean, it would be worth reaching out to some. You may not get. Some, someone that has technical expertise for a bike head okay. plan, that's a really good comp plan person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is yeah. it something you're going to be able to get that, yeah. that expertise for having them both at the same time? Maybe. Maybe there are people that can do both. But. So, yeah, and to be clear, too, so we were, what we're looking at is we probably send out two separate RFPs, okay. one for the comp plan and then one for the bike and pet plan. Mm -hmm. So we can target firms that specialize in bike and pet planning to do that. Wouldn't necessarily need to be together. Now we could certainly negotiate because if we go out for a request for publications, and let's say we have company A can do both the comp plan and the bike plan, and they submit a proposal for both. Say, boy, we really like them for both. Would they negotiate a price with us then to maybe get a value add because they're going to be doing both? Mm -hmm. And then could they, if they do that simultaneously, does that add some value too? But regardless, I think the idea was just at a minimum, try to get them aligned timeline-wise so that there isn't one project overseeing or superseding the other, that they're kind of working in conjunction with each other more than anything else. Is that something that staff can handle, having two big plans going on at the same time? Because that can be a lot. What? Well, I think uh, the comp plan will be largely run through community development. I'll kind of take the lead on that. I'm guessing the bike and pet plan will be kind of more Rex's area of, of emphasis. I, obviously, Aaron's going to play a role in it. Yeah. Rex, Brian, all of the departments right. have a role in the comp plan. So, yeah. really good hands. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it's public works stuff. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Public works team, team thing. Mm -hmm. so, the reason I believe I like, I like the review with them at the same time because I think it gives us more consideration. Because they're looking mm -hmm. at this is what the comp plans. Well, 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 wait a minute. What about the bicycle? How does that affect sure. that at the same time? So they don't all of it. Now they're established, and now we got to try to meet their criteria. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. I, I don't know anything about the comp plans. Yeah. I'm just. How many pages in the bicycle? Right I was going to bring it. Here, 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 here. I forgot to grab it. I think I got it at home. But, but I think the Rex's right point, a lot of it is. Yeah, the, the terminology has changed. Yeah. There's different things they look at now that weren't there 15 years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I don't want to say a lot of it could, could, some of this could be cookie cutter too. I mean, oh, yeah, cool. they, they, they've done, whoever gets this work for the Viking Pet Plan has probably done Many. a number of them. Yeah. Whoever will wind up getting it. The state laws don't change. Municipality, so a lot of that information will just be able to be plugged in, and then what they will work on more is trying to better arrange what's unique to the village of Eshwaban and what those goals and objectives and projects are for the village. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the way kind of it was with with our plan back, you know, when we did ours. I remember. Yeah. One of the next items on the agenda, and I don't really want to get into that now. But I was looking through, the, through that, and I thought, well, we could put that in a bike pit plan. And, and one of the things I noticed, they talked about in, in, in the bicycle-friendly community, they talked about end-using, you know, end-destination and bike parking. 
and they've made reference to the Association of Pedestrian Bicycling Professionals, and they have guidelines. Well, rather than saying, here's what we want, the bike racks we want, here's what we could just say, we want it to meet these guidelines. And that's a pretty short paragraph rather than pages of specifications. Yeah. And somebody else has done the work. And if you want to say, what do they want? Well, you just go to APBP and say, well, here it is. So I would, when, when if this moves forward and gets approved and comes to reality, I'm going to assume that the firm that is chosen will be at several of our bike and meetings. That we probably will need to break out and have some very specific meetings just for the bike and pet plan mm -hmm. without worrying about a lot of the other things that we're talking about, almost like a breakout. So whether that's a, a subcommittee of this committee or, or however we want to do it, but this committee would work probably very closely with the firm that's chosen mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to you know give some of these yeah. ideas, just like you said, Kyle. Yeah. So so you just volunteered. <laughs> so what is the timeline on this and what do we need to do from here? Does the committee have to make a recommendation to go forward? Does it have to go to village board at some point or are we looking at next year? What are we talking about? I think however it, it, it goes down, I think it's important for the committee to say that they feel, my personal opinion is that you guys feel that it's, it's time to, to update the plan. So I, I, I might but say qualified. Yeah, I might say you might yes. want to make a, a motion or someone might want to think about making a motion that yes, it's time to update the plan. The committee feels that that, that uh, it's needed and, and, and move on from there. And, right. and then we would work with the RFPs that went out and see if we can how, how like, we can marry them. I like the words that is in that are in that's, that's in here. The staff recommendations to have the plan. Updated by a professional group. Is that your motion? I think so. I, okay. Yes. So I think. His motion is yes. that yes. the bike pet committee wants a professional firm to update our I think or so. to redo I, the bike I, pet. Do we want to reference the comp plan or not? Okay. Motion by Leroy. Anyone have a second for that? A second. Second by Dale. Um, any other discussion questions? Okay. All of the base say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? To, okay. to also you. answer Tracy's question, so the yep. thought process yep. would be moving this forward to Village Board, if right, we want to draft the actual RFP, so the request we do review, we'll review that. Ultimately, this will be incorporated into the budget for 2024. Same thing with the comp plan, they'll draft their, their own specifications for the consultant, go through the budget <laughs> process, if it gets adopted and approved as part of the budget for 2024. We send out the RFPs and request for proposals late 2023, get a consultant on board early 2024, and then we're rolling with the planning process through the rest of the calendar year. Thank you. Thank you. You are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next agenda is a discussion and review of the engineering section of the League of Planned Bicycles Bicycle Plan. I am going to get to myself. I just want to make one statement before we get going on it. Um, I would ask the committee, it's a big document, and hopefully you all had a chance to look through it. And instead of Joel going through the whole thing, if you have any questions on anything, please ask them and then we'll jump right to that section and try to clarify. In my opinion, staff has put the time and energy into this. They know a heck of a lot more than we do. And for us to say, well, what about this or that, just say, if it looks good, it looks good. Then we go on to another section. And a lot of it's going to be no, because we don't have a lot of it. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, but I would say if you keep your discussion that way, if there's questions that you have on specific questions, let's do that and then move on from there. Otherwise, we could be here till midnight trying to go through every single piece of it. So that would be my suggestion, and I am going to sit down and not join the discussion. All right, well, with that, thank you, Tracy. Appreciate that. That'll help with discussion. Um, <laughs> any questions? Is there any area that you want to focus on or delve into? And there may not be. I did not. So, what was in your packet was not updated from our prior conversation because I was waiting until after to me to kind of finalize some of those ones. So, there were some comments that you made at the last meeting. I did not <laughs> Oh, 
uh, on uh, page 14, this is packet page 36, V3, has your community adopted a design manual or guidelines that establish minimum standards? Well, is that kind of what the, the, the new white plan is going to do, or? Um, yeah, so that question is related to V3. So that was a new question, right? So that you can adopt a new idea. It certainly could be incorporated as part of that updated bike and pet plan. So the bike and pet plan really kind of recommends policies, but then from there, one of the action items in the bike and pet plan could be to establish a formal specifications manual that then would be used anytime projects come up. So we have a we have a kind of a guideline right now. But we have a we do not have a firm policy that says staff or board when you have these types of projects, these are the design criteria that you must. Same thing if a new development comes in. We have some things like I think we updated the bike rack ordinance yeah. that does require, but not some of the full details that these these policy manuals have. So by having that, that gives us really clear direction from staff that well, this, is, this is our standard, this is what we require, and it has been effectively adopted by the village board, so now we know it's a set policy, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I think in the long run, it's easier than just something ambiguous. Absolutely, yep. So I think um, one of the, I'll give you an example, in other communities, we do not have a formal, typical specifications policy. So we have good past practice, but we don't have an adopted typical specs manual. So the typical specs manual would be designed to accommodate a variety of civil engineering topics. Typical cross sections on local residential streets, design standards for sidewalks, for bike lanes, and it would be adopted by so the village board would actually adopt an ordinance that says this is your design manual. So when a project comes in, I'll give you an example, Highland Ridge, right? We had a lot of conversation about the road coming into Highland Ridge. Should it include sidewalks? Should it include trails? There was nothing. We, we didn't really have anything. Yeah. So then what, what do we tell them? The developer just comes in with whatever they want to do, and that's essentially what we have to accept because we haven't set in code what the requirements are. Now, if we have that typical section manual, We'd say, here's our typical section manual, design the roads to match that. Design it, and all we're doing then is just verifying that they've got our requirements versus having in line over what should be included. Yeah. So, th th this would definitely be a recommendation that I think the staff would even have in the bike and head plan is to eventually adopt the typical specifications manual by code so that we have a firm understanding of what's expected of us to educate and encourage new development. Good question. So then on page 39, when it talks about um, incentives and requirements for developers, property management companies, and employees to provide secure bike parking and other electric facilities that is not in any policy, any, any policy or code that we have. I thought that it was. I thought that it was automatic that when a new development comes in, they have to have bike racks. But is it just a suggestion? <laughs> just so we can put an X on that one. You, you would mark none of the above, but I thought we were already doing that. So I don't think we require them. We we recommend. We recommend, we recommend but I. I don't think there's a requirement. Right. And that, that was if, if that was kind of a question for me is we kind of recommend it. We don't have a we have a policy now that establishes the type of bike rack that should be used as long as it meets a certain standard. Yeah. But I don't know that we necessarily have a firm policy that says you have to incorporate these other facilities. Okay. Then can you put if other please describe and put that please describe because it looks like we don't do anything when it's something. Sure. Yeah. I, I just think that's important that some of this we don't have the specifics for, but we can describe what we do to it. I think that's what we have to look at when we're looking at this. We don't necessarily have the policies, but we do do it indirectly. And, you know, obviously we may not get the grant or get the name right away, but it's something to look at. We might, they say, well, they're doing this, 
this list of instruments is not necessarily a policy, but I think it's important because we do do that, at least in that section. I don't know if there's anything else that we do sort of that we can put what other things describe. Well, I think part of the reason we're going through this is to find out what we do well and where we need yes. to step it up. So if we could have just described it, we could know we're sorry for it at all. <laughs> B, B, B nine B. What page? Uh, page thirty nine. Where? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 I always recommended them, right. but again, it's just a recommendation. There's, we don't have anything written saying we want, we want bike racks. Or they were first saying we'd like you to put them in, and if you do, they should meet these guidelines. Thoughts, Page 37. Obviously, I'm going to the first half and the second half. I didn't understand B5, the car parking minimums, because I thought that in Ashwaba, with a building, you have to have so many parking spots. So then it says car parking minimums have been reduced in the last five years, but no minimum car parking standards. I thought we had that. I thought we had a minimum that when you build a new building, you have to make sure that you have a handicap and maybe two other people from the square footage of the building. So if it's a small building, you have to have one spot. If it's a larger building, you have to have three or four spots. I thought that was something that was in our it, it, Well, and that's what had been reduced. So in the last five years, there has been a reduction in minimum car parking. So you can answer multiple boxes on this question. So over the last five years, we have changed our ordinances, our zoning code, to reflect that there are in certain zoning districts no minimum car parking standards. So certain zoning districts do not have a minimum. You could explain that in the if other places where the word sure. hasn't, because I I got confused in that because it didn't, didn't make sense to me. We reduced in the last five years, but yet yeah, we have no minimum car parking standard to check four boxes. So sure. it's kind of confusing. Probably more in how they ask the question. You know, but we do do it. It's just that maybe not, yeah, like I said, how they asked it, but we do do it. Yeah, when you look at B7, I should be talking, but we, the what we just talked about with that court case, that totally hits on page 38, <laughs> totally hits that. <laughs> it's like, yes, we just had this, this, and this. Yeah, but now we'll have to change the yeah. answer on that one, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's like, well. Instead of going backwards, you're going to be 35. That's all right. We're going to go backwards. A little bit dyslexic. As long as we don't go forward again. Well, I didn't get that far before. I didn't read all of it towards the end of the summer. I didn't understand that we didn't have a local complete street ordinance. Don't we have ordinances for the streets, the stop signs, how wide they're going to be? 
So yeah, 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 a complete, really yeah, really complete really streets like basically that. signifies that when a street is designed, it's going to, as Tracy mentioned earlier in the meeting, take into account all users. So meaning the complete street. So yeah, it's going to, we do not have an ordinance that says, so generally what you'd see in an ordinance like that is that uh, pedestrians have to be accounted for in the design. So in all likelihood, there's an off-street accommodation, sidewalks or trails. Bicyclists have to be accounted for. So that could be a wide outside troller, could be a dedicated lane, it could be a multitude of things based on the traffic count and the, the impacts. Um, intersections, cross uh, mid-block crossings, things like that are all accounted for, refuge islands, the whole gamut is included. Right now, if you were going to build a new subdivision with a local street, there is no requirement for those types of considerations. Yeah. few years back, the state had adopted a complete streets requirement. Um, so if you were funding any project through state grant dollars, you were required to meet that component. That has since been rescinded. Is that in the budget bill too? Mm -hmm. See, because to me, street, I wasn't thinking sidewalks. I was thinking street width and street built lines for bicycle. Um, like lanes and just the regular lines for pedestrians to walk, and I thought we had something in place for that. You know what I mean? So it's it's hit and miss with us. They didn't do anything for scooters either, did they? In wheelchairs, I'll see and all that. But they were thinking about it, they didn't do anything for that either. Right. We've had a lot of talk. Yeah, we've had good thoughts. I never talk about it. Well, maybe, maybe not enough action. <laughs> so, one of the things that I'll mention that can be um, challenging at times is you will have a lot of conversation, discussion. and Tracy knows this from being on the board that oftentimes you think you have this really great idea and you want to present it and there's a proposed ordinance, but then you also recognize there's a mul there can be or could be a multitude of unintended consequences by crafting this ordinance because now it's black and white, it's limited. And when you don't craft the ordinance and it's clean and open on the books, now you have a little bit more discretion. So oftentimes, Governing bodies tend to appreciate discretion because now they have flexibility. And then it, that's where you get into this kind of quandary of well, what, what are we doing? Well, we have discretion. We want to we want to evaluate every action on its own merits instead of having a concrete approach to how you want to address. So we can do it now on this street and this block. And next month, uh, somebody else's this block. We don't have to just because we did it last time. We don't have to do it again. So the the, you know, the board has it out. If it's in the if it's been codified, the board doesn't have a choice. So we have a present ordinance that's making its rounds, and the, the ordinance is being drafted based on feedback from the board to say, well, this is this is how we approve these types of licenses. We've always done it that way. Staff has said, well, it's. It's not written into the ordinance that way, so any applicant could come forward with that type of proposal. When you come back with the draft ordinance to reflect the, the desire that the board had for that licensing, say, so, well, we don't want that anymore in the ordinance because then we, we can't make decisions on their own merits for the individual applicant. That happens all the time, right? That they don't want to confine themselves into a box by crafting this ordinance. They would rather have it free and loose so that they can make decisions on their own. And that's probably why like complete street ordinance and, and things like that oftentimes don't get passed because now you're saying that this is what it's going to be every single time. But for one is that what the next? Yeah. What well, may not make sense for them. Yeah, right. Okay, page 44, I'm just going through this. Okay, 
Went from 39 backwards to 45. We're doing good. Um, what we've seen them at a local over the last four years, I'm sure we've done that. Yes, that we have. I would guess we have had to have done that. Yeah, we've increased one speed since I've been here. I don't know. It's getting picky, but I would think. We're related to B20. Has your community worked across traffic to slow down motor vehicles to increase safety for all roadway users? Well, we do visually narrow lanes. Does that count? I was being highly critical and said I didn't think so. No. <laughs> I would think if you did um, bump outs, maybe speed tables. Or, or what they did on when they reconstructed Broadway. Right. That slows yeah. things down. Yeah. Chicane type, chicane yeah. type movements, things like that. You weren't, you weren't here then, but for I think about a week, they had center islands on Brooklyn to slow traffic down. Well, those lasted a week. Those looked pretty neat. They were gone. They, were, they didn't last very long. So, were they like orange barrels? In the no. no, they were actually mediums. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did. Yeah. They're yeah. flat, though. Okay. Yeah. Anyone yeah. could drive over them. So, I could answer yes, I, but we took them out. So, I just put yes, <clears throat> we tried it. So, the last race they wrote, oh, two, three years, maybe? Yeah. Well, Argon had the same thing. So yeah. So yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. It was yeah. Argon. Yeah, they didn't last for it. Well, they were just so, silly. I mean, they didn't. Like they tried them for a year and then they debated them for a year and then they said, I got to go. And, and now urban, public safety is saying there's a speed problem there. Yeah. Well, that was part of it. But I, didn't they say there was a separate one too? Brooklyn too. So at one point, we recognized that might be a problem. We tried to do something about it. Yeah, but what they did was was not going to take care of it. Right? It was silly. You know, it's like, do, do it, do right. They didn't do right. They had a flat curb that anyone could drive right over. It didn't make any difference. It was like driving over the road. If there was, you know, a real curb, it probably would have done something. But if it wasn't done that way, it wasn't done properly. It's going to make a difference. I think there's a, a good example of some best practices for traffic calming, not only in, in our bike and pet plan, but with the update in the one too, where you're going to see bump outs, speed tables, lane width narrowing, redu reduction of lanes, variety of things, additional tree plantings. I mean, you find speed reduction just by allowing on street parking in areas that are passing well. Um, narrower street widths. We have kind of a policy here where even our local residential streets are pretty wide where you can expect parking on both sides and still two free lanes of travel, which increases your speed, too. And we fix potholes that speeds cover. Yeah, but we do a great job of making it runs compared to some of these counties. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that helps. Page 46 in that. No, I'm still on 45 looking at stuff there, not knowing. Like, we don't have signs and cameras, which surprises me. I don't know what you're saying. Signs and cameras. Speed feedback signs and cameras. We, we do have a portable sign. Um, again, I was just trying to be kind of hypercritical. So um, they are portable, but they're not out all the time. So a lot of communities, and I would actually encourage this group in our village to look at, if we have those areas like Brooklyn and Marley, is keep those dynamic message boards that are permanently mounted next to your speed limit signs. And have those go off. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody says it's, you're going too fast. Yeah. 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 They, they do work. They do work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. They don't work there because where's the officer going to park to pick you up on the bridge? <laughs> but yeah, I, I believe they would. Well, I wonder if that too, I feel like makes such a difference too. It's like where we go in Anna Marie by my husband's family, all theirs are set one mile under what the actual speed limit is. And then you come up here and you can be like five miles over before that they start blanking you go down there and literally at 24 it's flashing at you nice. like you're right here. They're on like a tiny little island. But like, you know, I feel like even that makes such a difference. So in my current community, we started installing those in various neighborhoods and we had a number of complaints. And um, 
this was all, we had a bunch of neighborhood meetings and neighbors and we approached Put the signs in and they have what's called stealth mode on the sign. So they actually work and they collect data, but they don't actually get feedback to the motorist. So it's kind of funny, we put up the signs. We didn't say anything, they went up. One of the local residents took a picture of it, posted it on Facebook and said, oh, look at, you know, the town puts these signs up. They don't work. What, what else should we expect from the town? They can't get anything right kind of thing. They didn't know that it was on and collecting data for two weeks. Then we flipped the sign on. And we got data for two weeks with the sign on. Then after two weeks, we turned it off again, ran it on stealth mode for another two weeks and collected data. And what you yeah. found is a pattern. Yep. It actually reduced the speed when it was on versus when it was off. And it was kind of, interesting. Yeah, so you can kind of turn them on and turn them off and start kind of changing the behavior of, of motors. Uh, but to get back to that point, so that comment or that question asked for automated speed enforcement, Wisconsin does not allow for automated speed enforcement through cameras. So that's what Illinois for that. That's on B20. You can put that down too. Yes. Uh, on B20, it says bicycle friendly storm sewer grates. We have that, don't we? That's what my question was. I don't know. Do we? Say, Tracy, I know we, do we somebody put tinfoil on we, one. Um, I know there's some out there that are not, but the village has been over the years really replacing and putting new ones in. I think they most of them are, yeah. but every now and then we'll. Because we'll I see complained some about one, and they yes. fixed it like the next day or yeah. a couple days yeah. later because it, it had some. Metal bars that were yeah. welded on or soldered on or something that fell off over the years, and I just yeah. said, "Hey, you know, I just said went on the website and just clicked on whatever that is, how do I and ask a question?" And like a couple of days later, I went by and it was like a block from my house. It was fixed. <laughs> no. Yeah, when they first started that, they retrofitted a lot of them. Yes. With those fires, which sure. was fine because you can't, they're expensive. You can't replace everyone in your community immediately. So they retrofitted and then they started, you know, replacing as they could. Um, so there's still some, but not many. I think the village has done a really good job of getting rid of the ones that are well. And when the when those break, then they'll come and probably just replace them, I would imagine. Because they've been retrofit once. But yeah, it's a problem. I mean, your tire goes right in there. You keep going, your bike's in there. <laughs> it's like, Quite a firm break, huh? Yeah, hitting railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You're still there. Yeah, yeah. Lucky. Can yeah. you have separate, separate paths for those cyclists and pedestrians? Uh, so, in that case, what you'd see is like in a park area along a greenway, you actually have two designated trails one that's only for pedestrians, the other one for bicyclists. Maybe, like, this, let's say it's a 20 foot road or 15 foot road, but it would be clearly delineated as to what where the bikes are and where the pedestrians are. I, I could argue that the, uh, the Fox River Trail may. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. There's not enough right There's not enough room. No. Yeah. But there's but so they much. Could use that that's in there. So, would this be something that the committee could, it's easy to do with some of these things that we could look into doing, or is it not easy to do? Uh, which question are you looking at? Uh, still page 45 through 29. Like, removal of on street car parking, we never did that ever. Um, just doing it for snow events, for an event. So if you're looking at B20, yeah. like B20A, that B20, list. B21. Oh, B21. List. Yeah. Well, the places where we have bike lanes, there's no parking. You have Cormier with bike lanes, you have Broadway with bike lanes, and you have Hanson Road with bike lanes, so there is no that. parking allowed there it's with like bike we, lanes. It's like we do do some of this, but how much of it they want us to do all of it, or we do all accept some and we do it. I think what, you know, like if, I, if I'm looking at, so B21 is not. B21 is the bottom of the page. Yeah. So like colored bike lanes, I mean, that's, it's not hard to do that. It's just, a, it's really a policy decision as to whether or not the village wants to. I think we don't have any old policies here. Well, well policies these, are, these are just things for us to talk about when we talk about the new bike plan or what we're talking about over it. It's, 
Yeah. You know, well, this is not this is not an application we're filling out. We're just looking at that to, to see where we fit to what well, like I said, what we do well and what we need they to think. probably do a few more things in B twenty one. Well there's definitely things in B twenty it's just a matter of what's the priority, right? What are the priorities for the community? If you wanna eliminate on street car parking, not say on Mike McCarthy Way. You could do that and then that would provide additional area for cyclists. Yeah, let's do it on the African J. Right, so it comes down to kind of policy. Is that what's the priority for the community? Mm -hmm. Is to ensure that there's parking, or is it really for a safe route for bicyclists? And then how do you do that? Uh, we'll be talking in a few months about Holmgren Way. There's a variety of things that we could entertain there, right? Things could be a lane reduction, it could not be lane reduction. It could be we have the uh, Metro Transit that runs Holmgren Way. So do we have a dedicated bus lane? Maybe we ought to see how College Avenue and Arizona. Yeah, they just yeah. passed the 18 passed month. It. They're gonna. That's a great. They passed the, they go um, three lane configuration. Yeah. That'll totally be good. different. I don't. I can't. I don't know if that's what we're getting. Right. I, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I personally drove enough downtown to City Hall when I worked down there, and like, this is gonna be way better. Oh, four lanes is horrible. Four Car lanes doors horrible. flying out. Yeah. How many year misses I've had with car doors opening up and then you got a quick deployment and yeah. the car in your lane. Slows traffic down. Then there's a time. college student that's what, looking yeah. at their phone as they cut out in front of a car. It's, It'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks and Thanks, Annette. And doesn't this get sent into the committee then that's going to it does know, give us suggestions on what to do too. It, exactly. So we don't really have to add everything. Exactly. Out. That's the whole idea behind yeah. it that they look at it and go, oh, well, you could work on this, right. this, and this. So it's it's not like right. you have to have everything. Nobody has everything. Right. So yeah, and this is just the engineering part of it, right? Um, right. So there's mm -hmm. other sections. Four other sections, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious what they do with all of this because I'm sure they don't publicize it. To you as a bicyclist. Reverse angle parking. Remove of on street car parking. How do they even prove that somebody did that? You, well, you, you mean you could answer that? You be a municipality that's dishonest and absolutely. Yeah, we done that. Right. I, I mean what when, when I look at the I don't know when I, I think I look, if the municipality is going through the process of applying for it, they're not gonna lie. They're doing it for a reason because they want their community. That's why they're doing it. Otherwise, they wouldn't waste your time. And if they have to lie to but, get in. So, uh, what, removal of on street car parking, what, what's the advantage of that? I mean, if you, you'd be better off with bicycle lanes, right? So, I mean, I'll, lanes, you know, I don't. Yep. yep. It just, it's a lot of stuff to me. Absolutely. And I'm, and I know, yes, we're going to, we're going to learn something by doing it. But I look at it and I'm like, wow. I think the, it's overwhelming. As the example of removal of on-street car parking, that, that, that's it's a it's policy it's argument it's that it's would be had here. Yeah. yeah. That if you said we want to remove car parking, like Mark McCart Mike McCarthy Way is a bad example, of course, but let's say we want to remove on-street car parking. Yep. And the purpose and the intent is to increase safety and accessibility for bicyclists. So it's a cognizant effort that we're prioritizing bicyclists over parked cars. So I think that's what they're asking for is that you're going to take, you have a narrow road that is very limited, you have a lot of on street parking, and there's not enough, ad, or there's not adequate room for bicyclists to traverse that area safely. So you have to remove the on street car parking so bicyclists are not appropriate. We talked about this a couple of meetings ago about the place that has all the volleyball games. Mm -hmm. And we talked yeah. about doing something there, and there was. Oh, yeah. A fear there would be a big objection by the business owner because he depends on people, people, people park on their cars. So they come up there about five weeks ago. I had to park down by the by the railroad tracks, which is a couple hundred yards down the street because parked on the road because the parking was one. On the other side of the light, the bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how it's for every turn. Crazy. So certainly taking car parking off of that street would make it much easier to cycle for cyclists, but you know you can't you can't really do that. That owner would love it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Whatever. All right. Anything else? Any other questions or comments specifically for Joel? Anything? I'm going to read this? a little closer. We need to spend more time and read it a little closer and write the questions down like he said and have them prepared instead of otherwise like if it, you're right this could go on forever right take well, each piece and say you find yeah. something right. by every page absolutely yeah absolutely but if you write it down then you're not we're not going back and forth we can maybe help him by starting at the beginning does yeah. anybody have a question on page one does anybody have a question on page two I, i'm going to be honest I, I wasn't prepared I think one of the things too that is probably helpful by this whole thing is it sounds like there are concepts in here with just the questions that they're asking that maybe this group hasn't even entertained. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so maybe it's a matter of figuring out, well, okay, I think somebody asked the question, why would we do X, right? Why why would we roll down on parked cars on street parking? Mm -hmm. Okay, well here's here's why. Now you start to think about it. Like, well yeah, I've experienced this challenge on X road because there's all this parking so maybe that's something we want to entertain specifically in the next you know plan update and we can include that as a prioritization um we talked about it very briefly uh with element way and reverse angle parking mm -hmm. right and what so interestingly i was on spring break with my family and we were down in arkansas and we were in an area in hot springs and they have reverse parking mm -hmm. and i'm pulling in and i done it before, but my wife has never done it before. And she was freaking out. She's like, why are you backing in to this spot? You're gonna hurt somebody or whatever, you know, you're gonna hit a car. And so just you might not even know what it looks like or how it performs. Um, I think what's interesting about this application is the emphasis that's placed. I'm not a bicyclist that maybe some of you guys are. Um, end of point facilities. Right? If you are a cyclist that utilizes transportation for um, not necessarily for recreation, but for necessity, so you're biking to work or biking to the store or something like that, you're more apt to be concerned about end of point facilities, bike racks and security and things like that. I'm more of a recreational cyclist, so if I go out, I leave my house, I bike, and I end at my house, so I really don't care. And I, if you're not if you're not a commuter, if you're not a commuter cyclist, you don't think about these things. But they could be a pretty important component of this whole plan. Well, and I just to give you an example. So I bike tonight, and unfortunately our bike racks got taken out, so there's no longer a bike rack at the village. Sure. And uh, <laughs> I was I was here the other night, and there was snow all over by the the only place I could probably park that would have been secure would have been by the light poles, but they're just buried in snow, so I couldn't use that. So any other post out here. They could easily pick it up and take it away. So I bought my bike inside. And that's the thing. I mean, you want to have a secure spot for anyone that's bicycling mm -hmm. there and it should be, you know, close to the entrance and visible place and all that good stuff. So so you're right. I mean, there's different needs for different people yeah. and what you're that's doing. And you know, we just need to keep that in mind as we're looking through this stuff. Um, I did notice there's not bikes that's been changed to light pole so our pop bellies on and off like a lot lately, so I thought about that earlier. I was like, I wonder, because then I was like, they, but I'm like, I don't know where they come from. So like, if they work there, there's one. Like, yeah. and it's not like it's just left there because yeah. it's gone and then it's back and gone back. So someone's like, somebody yeah. works nearby. That's right. Yeah. Where to put it. yeah, exactly. And you know, and that's not fair right. to them. You know, mm -hmm. that they don't have a secure place to park it and be able to park it anywhere you find. But it's just, you know, just the way it is. But I, I did go through the next section, which is education, but I'm gonna. Not hand that out because I think we still have a little bit of work to do here. And the reason for that is I want to talk to Dirk over at the school district and see if he can assist in going it out. Because the whole education piece delves into elementary education, middle school, and high school. There are some small sections in there about adult and community ed as it relates to bike and pedestrian in, in, or bicyclist interests. But the school that I, I have no idea what the school does, if the district does anything in elementary school at all. I, I, they do, but maybe they do. Yeah, and maybe Wellen can help with some of that too, because they do some of the adult, more of the adult stuff, and maybe some of the youth stuff, so they might be able to add some insight to it too. Joel mentioned this might give us guidelines of some things we should think about in the future, and there's a question here about bike repair racks, and I know there are some on the Fox River Trail, a few stations. I was thinking, you know, that might not be a bad thing for the community to put in a few places. Yeah, we're, we're looking at them right now. 
for the Ashwaubene or for the Trel the Tripstein village for the Trel that I've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion on that? Otherwise, it's just a discussion item. Um, look at it, please. See if there's anything else. Otherwise, Joel, maybe the June meeting or something, you bring the next piece and then we can maybe discuss this a little further if we need to at the next meeting. Um, and we'll just go from there. Okay, items for the next agenda. Um, the only things I had was update on the Bellum project. If you want to lobby in and light if you have anything on that, if you can put that on the agenda. West Main, you already talked about West Main, um, the study to build forward. And then the next section of like that, like friendly, but that we just talked about. So, what was that on, on the Bellum? Um, just to discuss with the Bellum, this is on the open art site. Yeah. Um, we had uh, for our pedestrian accommodations on their site. So, and I can it's provide an update because it can be part of staff update. But the, the Bellon project, so they did acquire all of the property along Allied, that along Lobby Allied Parkview. So, even that small office oh, building on yeah. West Corner, Bellon owns that entire area. When was that open? Um, over the last 12 months or so, they've acquired properties individually as they went along. That office building that's in the southwest corner, they're using that as their construction office now as they continue construction on their site. They are, originally when they proposed their ambulatory center, they were only going to build out the first and second floors. Floors three, four, and five were going to be kind of white boxed or just left vacant until they finish their um, operating plan. They are now finishing all five floors. So that's one of the reasons why they acquired all that property because in order to support the all five floors of operations, they needed additional space for parking. So part of that plan is to extend sidewalk along a short section of Parkview, so kind of up to that railroad track area, mm -hmm. and then it'll run all the way up north and south along Allied on the east side of the road, and then it'll run uh, a portion of Lobby will not extend beyond the entrance, the main entrance from Wabi, to, to, to the 41 by them. Okay. okay, so it won't extend past that main entryway. There'll be a crosswalk, obviously, that extends to the quick trip, so we'll have that. And then there's some improvements. That's at that intersection, right? They're not going to open another one hit not in or anything. Nope. Okay. So it's people. One at um, so they've made some improvements to their interior network as well. So there'll be sidewalk coming down from Wabi, south from Wabi, along the main drive. So if you're at Quick Trip, you walk on the sidewalk and you can come down to the main drive. There'll be some connectivity within their parking lots, between the islands and such, to get you to the front door. You and said you said now south on Wabi on the south side. South of Wabi, yep, yep. From the from uh, from Ridge down. Are you uh, talking or what? Well, from, you know where the main entrance is to the old Menard store? Yeah. That's approximately the area where the main entrance will be off of Wabi and the Bellum site. Okay. So if you picture a driveway there, if you will, there'll be a sidewalk that runs along the driveway from Wabi basically to the front door of the clinic. So there'll be some inner, inner so site like connectivity, if you will. Yeah. Same thing um, on employees. kind of the south. <laughs> West yeah, corner like, of the property, there'll be sidewalk because there'll be an employee entrance. Um, yeah, could you bring a plan meeting for sure. at the next yep. meeting? But just so you're aware that okay. they have made some progress towards that. I don't know that I have a formal site plan for you, but I can kind of walk Maybe through. just walk through, yeah, and maybe show so up. That when we, had, we had talked about going all the way underneath the highway, all the way around. Uh, that's, that's, that's because the Bellin owns that now. We're not going to do that right now, so we can get it to the viaduct. But once you get to the viaduct, there's limitations for right of way. We don't have any right of way to, to do so it. Okay. They, they built it without yeah. combination. And okay. then the DOT has that uh, slip through lane on the interchange. Yeah. We would have to basically replace the slip lane. Yeah. And that would be yeah. a, a lot of money. Yeah. Lot of money. I thought that right from the very start. <laughs> You wouldn't want to cross there anyway, so we no, there ain't no way. No. I mean, it would be it's like too bad because at some point they have to get to the other yeah. side because of the, yeah, exactly. I think, on the south Tracy, side. Further north. I don't know if this is a topic for this committee, but the sidewalk on Corvier Road, and I walked from Corvier Road like from Balsam Way, Hilltop, 
there are some pretty big cracks on that that run parallel to the street. It's not like in one individual square, there might be 15 squares of pavement that have cracks that sometimes are pretty wide. Now, I don't think it's a problem, but I think eventually it's going to be a problem. So is that on the sidewalk or on the road? Did on the say? sidewalk. On the sidewalk. I okay. so. oh. They can take a look at it and see. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm watching, bring, I don't know if this is appropriate for this committee or if we could just do yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's going with the, with the sidewalk? It's, it's going the length of the sidewalk. And there might be, you know, especially when you go up from, from Hilltop, you go up towards Santa Barbara. And even once you get down to Santa Barbara and go toward the highway, get in front of that little park. And, and there are some, there are some sections of that sidewalk have been replaced and others, they're just, you know, there's that big crack, and with all those ash trees that are eventually be taken down, some of those are raising up. So, you know, eventually stuff is going to be have to, have to be done. But it just I do know that they do grind a lot of stuff. You know, yes, they do stop walking. You know, on yeah. the sidewalk, because they're coming down. I know they come down Ponderosa. Nice thing for that. Yeah. Finally, yeah. you know, the village. The village. Because the pute makes the homeowners take care of it. A lot of municipalities. They go, they go by and they mark everything. Yeah. Either grind it yep. or replace it. Yep. Or they'll replace it. They replaced a couple sections by pioneering. Yeah. They didn't have to grind that. The new section was kind of taken off by the plow. <laughs> it was too high and it just literally took, it away. took the new yeah. piece right off. But it's perfect. It's nice and smooth. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Sorry, Otherwise, a motion to adjourn. I'm sorry. I move be adjourn. Second. I'll second from Leroy. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.